Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Tanisha. If you guys are new here, welcome. I would love if you guys would subscribe down below. So, just gonna get right into the video. I know you guys wanna know about what ordinary products you should not mix, but before we get into that, I do wanna say that I am gonna be having a little giveaway in today's video. I have received so much love and feedback on my other two videos. If you haven't seen them, I did a morning and night routine and then I also did my top five products from The Ordinary for hyperpigmentation, dark spots, oily skin, acne prone skin, all of that. So I will leave those videos linked down below. If you haven't seen them, go watch them. I've just received so much love, so I wanted to give back to you guys and do a little giveaway. So make sure you guys stay tuned until the end of the video to figure out how you guys can enter to win an ordinary product of your choice. All right, so we're just gonna jump right into the meat of this video. I know The Ordinary Products and skincare in general can be really overwhelming. And I know when I was first doing my research and finding out about The Ordinary, I felt very like, whoa, a lot of information. I don't know what I'm gonna be putting on my face. I don't know how to consolidate all of the information that I'm getting online, all of the research, all of the opinions. So I have done the research for you guys. I have formulated and rounded up all of the do's and don'ts, specifically the don't, the ingredients and ordinary products that you should not mix on your face. So the first products that you guys do not want to mix together, and when I say do not, like literally don't do it. Don't think that your skin is like invincible, it's so tolerant, no, don't do it. And I have said this in my other videos as well, you do not want to mix AHAs and BHAs together. So I have three here to show you guys. I have the Glycolic Acid 7% Toning Solution. If you guys watch my other two ordinary videos, you guys know this is like my ride or die. I love this thing. And then we also have the Lactic Acid 10% Plus Hyaluronic Acid. This is a great product for people with sensitive skin. If you still want the effectiveness and the results of an AHA, but you have a little bit more sensitive skin, this is going to be your go-to. And then we have the infamous AHA 30% Plus BHA 2% peeling solution this is like that vampire facial chemical peel that everyone talks about it's like... okay so first we're going to talk about what the heck is an aha what is a bha so aha is an alpha hydroxy acid and what those are are your lactic acids and your glycolic those are ahas bha beta hydroxy acid i don't know how i remember these things but i'm so proud are going to be your salicylic acid. I don't have one from The Ordinary, but I know they do carry one. If you're interested in that, I'll leave it down below, but that is gonna be your BHA. So AHA and BHAs are chemical exfoliants and they are gonna go in and do exactly that. They're gonna chemically exfoliate your skin instead of physically exfoliating it. So what they're gonna do result-wise is give you really clear, radiant skin, even out your skin tone and just overall brighten your skin because it's going in, exfoliating it and bringing new skin to life. The reason why you don't want to mix all of these products together in one routine is because, like I said, they're chemical exfoliants and if you use too much of these, they are going to be a little bit too exfoliating. Skin's going to get really irritated and overwhelmed and it's just too much for your skin to handle. So I know there's a lot of us that think like, oh my gosh, I'm going to use this as a toner and then I'm going to go in with this afterwards and I'm really just going to get my skin that I want. It's going to be really clear because I'm using all of these ingredients, but no, that's not going to happen it's going to be the exact opposite your skin is going to be completely overwhelmed it's going to freak out not know what to do and it's just a horrible situation so using all of these ingredients at once or even using this at night and then this during the day even if you separate it, it's still gonna be too much. It's gonna strip your skin raw and it's really gonna damage your skin's ability to recover because you're going in too much with an exfoliant and it's just leaving it bare. What I personally do is use this every single day at night and I only use this product. If I feel like I don't need something as strong, I will go in, like I said, with the lactic acid. This is perfect for people with sensitive skin. This is a more gentler form of an AHA, so if you have sensitive skin, this is gonna be your go to always switch it out you never want to use both of them at the same time and you definitely don't want to do the peel one night the vampire peel and then after you wash it off go in with the glycolic acid like you do not want to do that you want to make sure that your skin is getting what it deserves and using these products is definitely going to do that but if you use too much of them at the same time 
it's gonna have the opposite effect that you do not want okay next two products that you do not want to mix together retinol here this little bottle in here and vitamin c so i'm going to put a picture of the specific vitamin c from the ordinary that i'm talking about this is the l ascorbic acid this is pure vitamin c i don't personally have it but i really want to try it so it's next on my list i literally want to try every single thing from the ordinary so yes these two products do not mix them. We know that vitamin C is really good at brightening the skin, reducing signs of aging, gets rid of our fine lines, our wrinkles. It's a great brightening product for those of us that have hyperpigmentation. If you're like me and you have dark spots, vitamin C will be your best friend. So it's a great product to incorporate. Retinol is also another really great product to incorporate in your skincare routine, especially for those of us that are getting a little bit older or maybe in our mid twenties and we're reaching that dirty 30 age. This is the perfect time to start incorporating retinol in your routine because it has really great anti-aging effects so the younger you start obviously you have time on your side and all want beautiful radiant skin even in our 30s 40s 50s however old you are right so retinol is perfect what's not perfect is both of them together so the reason why you don't want to apply retinol and vitamin c together is because it's going to over exfoliate your skin the same reason why you don't want to mix aha and bhas together on the same night is the same reason why you don't want to mix retinol and vitamin c in the same routine and when i say same routine i mean if you're doing all of your skincare during the day you don't want to do retinol and vitamin c together for your morning routine and the same thing goes at night if you're doing your skincare at night you don't want to use these two products at the same time so the reason why the scientific reason why we're gonna go into that is because the pH levels can change so skincare ingredients that are water-based are basically formulated to work at a certain pH and then on the flip side the ingredients that are not water-based don't have a pH retinols pH typically is between 5 and 6 and that is where it works best it needs to be at a pH of 5 and 6 on the other hand L ascorbic acid or pure vitamin C works best at a pH of 3.5 or lower so that is where it's really gonna thrive it's gonna penetrate into your skin and give you the benefits that we want from it which is brightened skin lightening our dark spots all of that stuff so what happens when you mix retinol and vitamin C together is you lower retinols pH and you increase vitamin C's pH so basically they change pH levels into zones that they don't work best in so you're basically counteracting the effects of what you want from them so when you use them together they don't do what they're supposed to another reason why you don't want to mix them together is because they're different solubilities is that the word solubilities they won't dissolve or penetrate your skin so retinol is an oil soluble solution so it dissolves in oil on the other hand l ascorbic acid or vitamin c is a water soluble solution so it dissolves in water and what do we all know about cooking oil and water don't mix when you're adding l ascorbic acid into your skin with retinol it's not going to be able to penetrate and dissolve in that because it's dissolving in oil when it needs to dissolve in water that make sense so an easy solution for this is to basically separate them in your routines vitamin c thrives during the day it does best during the day while retinol does really great at night so the easy solve is use vitamin c during the day obviously apply your sunscreen we always need that sunscreen and then apply your retinol at night keeping both retinol and vitamin c away from each other and in different routines different times of day is basically going to ensure that they are at the ph levels that they need to be and they're going to work best in so that they can give you the best results all right the last duo that you should just not mix together and this is kind of a myth that we're going to talk about is l ascorbic acid and niacinamide so again i don't have l ascorbic acid with me but i do have niacinamide it is one of my top products that i absolutely love for controlling my oil for all you oily skin people acne prone skin people this is game changer so we know vitamin c is really good at brightening the skin reducing fine lines wrinkles hyperpigmentation really good for dark spots we know it's a miracle product niacinamide is also really good for controlling your oil like i said controlling the sebum production it reduces the appearance of blemishes enlarged pores redness and it's really good at 
promoting really clear skin. So when I was doing my research, there was a lot of differing opinions when it comes to mixing L-ascorbic acid or pure vitamin C with niacinamide. And I basically came to the conclusion, I'm gonna tell you what I found, but I came to a conclusion that you can take with a grain of salt. But we're basically, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this because there's, there's a lot to kind of unpack here. There's basically research that says that L-ascorbic acid basically turns niacinamide into niacin, which basically causes skin flushing. So you look really flushed, red, and it can really irritate your skin. Also said that mixing both of these two ingredients together will basically cancel them out. So if you apply this and vitamin C, it's basically like a one-to-one -one and both of them won't work. Vitamin C won't do what it needs to do and niacinamide can't do what it what it needs to do. There's also results that say that mixing them together can cause like a really tingling sensation and really inflame your skin. So people with sensitive skin, this is kind of the effects that they see, like you're really inflamed and it's really tingly and it hurts and it doesn't feel how it's supposed to. So a lot of these studies are from a really long time ago when vitamin C isn't as stable as it is now. A lot of the skincare that is in the stores and over the counter and that we buy uses a lot more stable forms of vitamin C. So there's like, this opinion is not really valid really. Like back then vitamin C was way crazier. So mixing it with niacinamide was, it's gonna cause all of these things for you. Now the skincare is a lot better for you. It's a lot more stable. The packaging that it comes in, the actual vitamin C itself is a lot more stable and you don't really see these results. However, I did want to include this as something that you should not mix because I really wanna bring light to the fact that if you are getting into skincare and you're getting into active ingredients, do your research and make sure you know what your skin type is and how your skin reacts to certain things. You really need to listen to your skin, especially when it comes to using active ingredients. It will tell you if it likes a product or not. Obviously there's things like purging where you really have to give it time to figure out if your skin is good, but you have to do your research when it comes to this stuff. I. I always do my research no matter what I put on my skin. I make sure I know every single differing opinion. I look at different articles. I look at different videos like this one. I make sure I have my facts straight before I put something on my face. My skin is a little bit more tolerant. I know in my morning and night routine, I personally mix the magnesium ascorbyl phosphate with niacinamide during the day, so I'm completely fine. But again, magnesium ascorbyl phosphate is a derivative of vitamin C. L-ascorbic acid is like pure vitamin C, that powder. So it's gonna be a lot more potent, a lot more strong. My skin is more tolerant. However, for those of you that have sensitive skin, I would make sure you do your research and look into the different side effects that people with sensitive skin may have because it could happen to you. So if you do want peace of mind and you wanna be careful, I would personally recommend that you don't mix L-ascorbic acid with niacinamide. Find something that is a little bit more gentler, a derivative of vitamin C like magnesium that will give you a little bit more peace of mind and make you feel better about mixing the two products together. There's so many other and better products that you can mix with L-ascorbic acid other than niacinamide. So I would definitely go down that route and maybe don't mix these two together. All right, so those are the three groups, three duos of products that I do not recommend you guys mix together. If you have made it this far, congrats, because we're gonna talk giveaway now. Yeah! I wanted to give back to you guys and basically thank you for all of the love and sweet comments and just interactions on my past two skincare videos. I have been talking to you guys for the past couple weeks and really listening to your problems and your stories and it's just been amazing to kind of talk about the ordinary and really affordable skincare and just getting our skin right during this time. Basically, I'm gonna be giving away one ordinary product to one of you guys, one of you lucky people that you basically get to pick out. So I will have all of the rules right here on the screen and also down below, but make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel. You follow me on Instagram. I will leave it linked down below. Also make sure you guys follow me on Like To Know It. It is an app where I basically post daily content, whether it's skincare, fashion, all of that stuff. And it's a really cool app where we can just basically interact and you guys can see daily outfits or posts from me. So make sure you guys follow me on there. Fourth 
last step is to thumbs up this video and then the last thing is to comment down below what skin problem or what problems are you having right now with your skin that you really want to tackle or you really want to solve and, and what product from the ordinary do you want that you think could really help with that so comment that down below so that I can know which product you guys want and then also leave your Instagram handle in your comment so that I can DM you guys if you are the winner so those are all the rules five easy steps I will have all of the rules again in the description box so that you guys can refer back I will be checking to make sure you guys completed all of the steps so make sure you <laughs> complete all the steps and yeah so good luck you guys I'm so excited to read your comments I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know what videos you want to see from me next whether it's skincare related fashion work related whatever leave them down below I always love to read your guys suggestions and I will see you guys in the next one Bye. I'm a city that